And last week, we talked about this WHO Pandemic Preparedness Treaty. Well, this week, we're going to be talking about it again, and next week, and we're going to keep on talking about it until everybody starts screaming about it, what they got in plan for us, what they got in mind for us. Because before, when you had Joe Biden, for example, coming out and talking about the patriotic duty to get the you-know-what, well, if this thing passes, there's not going to be any convincing. They're simply going to force it. You will not have a choice if you want to go see your kids or your grandkids or go see your mother in a nursing home or go take money out of the bank, right? Go vote. You're going to need to have the jab if this goes through. And you know what? Look, looking at all this, looking at all this, I'm kind of tired. Aren't you kind of sick and tired of the staples of what conservatives are talking about on Fox News? I, I, I honestly could not care any less now about Hunter Biden's laptop, you know, when this is what's coming in the real world. I believe the time is right for an international treaty or other legally binding instrument to provide the framework for a more coherent and coordinated response to future epidemics. The global digital vaccine passport is the enforcement mechanism for this global governance platform that the WHO has. Like many countries, the European Union made significant investments in COVID-19 certificates to help people move around as safely as possible during the pandemic. Building on the success of the EU system, WHO is proud today to launch the Global Digital Health Certification Network. This QR code on your phone, you don't, as Tony had said, you don't move unless you, the WHO approves you moving. That's very similar to the social credit system that mm -hmm. communist China uses and imposes on their own people. We'll put a link down below. You can watch that. I mean, it's, um, it's absolutely terrifying. And why no one's talking about it? Why the new and improved Fox News isn't talking about this every, every night? I'm not sure. You know, and the thing is, we're down here trying to apply the influence, whatever influence we possibly can, on the fact that the Pope, once again, Pope Francis, Team Francis over there in the Vatican, they are all in with what we just saw. These guys are all in with the coming pandemic preparedness treaty of Dr. Tedros and the WHO. What you're looking at right now on your screen is Dr. Tedros' own personal posting of a video on Facebook. He posted this personally, writing beneath it, quote, my team and I are so humbled and grateful for the Pope's support of our mission. Hashtag health for all. So let's get into this a little bit, friends. I think, I think progress is being made. But there's a long way to go, and there's a, there's a pretty scary year coming up. Everybody knows that. Election year. It's getting dicey, right? And everybody's talking about the politics. They're talking about the political war that's coming now in 2024. But tonight, I hope you'll join me <clears throat> in talking about something that I think is much more important, and that is the spiritual war of 2024. Because that's what it is, you know. It's a spiritual war. Donald Trump, the other night, uh, inadvertently asked a very probing question about this. Check this out. We're also very grateful to be endorsed by one of the nation's largest Catholic advocacy groups, Catholic Vote. It's called Catholic Vote. And I just want to thank them. They are incredible. Now, I don't know what it is with Catholics, but the FBI is going after Catholics. What is going? Who would? Why would any Catholic vote for a Democrat? You two. Anybody, any Catholic being harassed? Now, why would a Catholic think of it, what they're doing? I hear stories that are just horrible. Why would a Catholic be voting for Biden or a Democrat? Doesn't make sense. It's horrible. Now, do you know what, you know what the answer to the question is? I don't think Donald Trump does, but you do and I do, right? The answer is because the majority of Catholic voters in this country and around the world are simply not Catholic anymore. And this, friends, we come to this point now. This is what so-called traditional Catholicism has been all about all along from the very beginning. Everything happening right now in the world. And much of it is scary and it's terrifying, right? Much of it is truly terrifying. But all of it is exactly what traditional, the traditional Catholic counter-revolution has been about from its inception, from the very beginning. It was never just about the Mass. It was always about the war on Christian morality, the war on the Christian family, the war on God, 
The war now on life itself. The war on what's left of Western civilization. You see? We've said that for so many times. People on Fox News or whatever, they're doing a great job. But what are they doing? They're chronicling the plane crash. They're telling you how it's crashing. But they don't have, to, they don't have actually any serious answer to how you stop the plane from hitting the ground and blowing up. Because the answer is the spiritual answer that no one is eager or willing to talk about. Very few people are willing to talk about. And meanwhile, the, the, the demons are mobilizing all around us. We see them every night on, on TV. If we are worried about the rise of authoritarianism in this country, we are worried about potential rise of fascism in this country. If we're worried about our democracy falling to an authoritarian and potentially fascist form of government, the leader who is trying to do that is part of that equation. Mm -hmm. But people wanting that Correct. is a yeah. much mm -hmm. bigger part mm -hmm. of that That's equation. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, Trumpism is sometimes what we call it. Mm -hmm. MAGA movement is probably a better way to do it. But there is an authoritarian mm -hmm. movement inside yes. Republican politics that isn't being bamboozled by Trump. Mm -hmm. They are pushing Trump That's to yeah. get more and more right. extreme. Again, I don't care what you think about Donald Trump, but when you look at what Rachel Maddow just said, and there are many others who are saying the same thing now, when they took over the violence in the streets over political elections of vilifying, demonizing the opposition as they're doing. Well, you know where this leads, right? To where it always leads, to where godless atheism always leads, historically speaking, to guillotines, to firing squads, to killing fields, to gas chambers, right? And it all starts now with this ongoing war against God, against religion. And that explains now the flagrant disregard for Christians, for Christianity, for Christian moral teachings, which is now on full display everywhere we look. <laughs> I'll give you an example. <clears throat> the other day, I flew Delta Airlines somewhere. Got on a plane, and I look up, back up the aisle from as I was putting my, my bag up in the overhead, and I see that at every single seat, it's a big plane, big plane, every single seat, those little screens on the backs of the seat in front of you, every single one had this on the screen. You see that? I've seen it before, but I've never seen it in every single seat like it now is in Delta Airline. You, know, you, you, you literally could not escape it. If you're sitting there as a little mom or dad with your little kids, Daddy, Mommy, what's that? <laughs> but see, Delta Airlines doesn't care. And why don't they care? Because they're not afraid of offending Christians anymore because we've lost our identity almost completely. Why? Because Christianity, through the process of tearing it down and ecumenism and dialogue and everything else, Christianity has become a woke joke. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally not judgmental. I'm a Christian, but I totally don't believe any of the Bible's teachings on sexual morality. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally a feminist. Definitely a feminist. Oh, totes a feminist over here. Now, I know the Lutherans put that out. It's a fantastic bit, and it certainly applies to the Catholic Church. This is what Donald Trump is talking about. And with Francis at the helm and the Catholic Church with his synod on synodality, we're not going to offend anybody. We're just going to have conversations now. With that guy at the helm, this is going to get exponentially worse. Because why? Because Catholicism is the, the largest Christian denomination in the world, and it's just hoisting the white flag of surrender, you see? That's gonna get much worse.